Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition stop stories. St. Lucia's Prime Minister has once again been selected to play a critical leadership role in the region. Government's roadmap to recovery from COVID-19 is dissected and the Department of Education warns against fake news. The 10th Special Emergency Meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government has concluded on how CARICOM will withstand COVID-19. Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community CARICOM met virtually on the 5th of May 2020 specifically to continue their efforts to harmonize their responses to and policies on the multifaceted impact of COVID-19. Heads of government welcomed a presentation from a regional working group which indicated that the pandemic was largely contained in the region due to the decisive action by governments to put restrictions in place. They also noted the emphasis by the group that reopening by the member states must be done with the health consideration being the forefront criterion. The recommendations also included suggested criteria for a protocol on the reopening of airports for intra-regional travel. In that regard, heads of government established a subcommittee led by the Honorable Alan Chastney, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, to have discussions with stakeholders in the tourism industry, including the hoteliers, airlines, cruise operators, and the labor unions, to settle the appropriate protocols needed to ensure safety for workers and visitors upon reopening of the sector. This would be informed by a regional public health policy. Heads of government stress their determination to speak to the cruise and airline industries with one voice. The government of St. Lucia has expressed its commitment to continuing capital projects in order to prevent a total collapse of the local economy. This is exceedingly important given that investments and prospective investments in St. Lucia have been hard hit. The issue was examined Sunday evening during a live panel discussion on the national television network. More from Anisia Antoine. The COVID-19 pandemic is expected to have a lasting effect on investment and the economy. The COVID-19 Roadmap to Recovery, the Role of Investment panel discussion focused on the review of the economic impact of the pandemic on St. Lucia whilst charting the road to recovery. The panel of experts weighed in on the state of the economy, the medium-term development strategy, the support for local investments, and St. Lucia's capital expenditure and investments projects. Tommy Descart, chief economist at the Department of Economic Development, spoke on the key areas currently being focused on in the medium-term development strategy. We think that uh, some of what we try to achieve it are structural, uh, uh, try to remedy structural issues in the economy that has been there since post-independence. And so essentially pre or, or post-COVID, this will remain. And so the government needs to still continue uh, um, these initiatives. However, we see the MTDS um, now being positioned as sort of coming and give a stimulus during this time. So, so it's really about the issue of timing. If we fast track some of these initiatives, particularly the infrastructure projects, we have a, a very ambitious road infrastructure project. And again, building um, climate resilience to infrastructure. We have a hurricane season it's just around the corner. So, so we see the medium term development strategy now doubling up as, as, as a sort of a stimulus in the, in the short term by providing an injection of resources um, into the economy through capital projects, but also um, helping us and putting us on a, on a platform that we could uh, have a quicker recovery. The chief economist explained that the majority of the initiatives will be financed through multilateral development banks, ensuring transparency in public procurement processes. Descat also noted the importance of ensuring that the projects are labor intensive. I would like to say that most of the projects are at the commencement of the cycle of the construction fees. And that's generally the, the period where it's very labor intensive. And so we see that um, you won't just have a um, uh, project happening and it's just a few persons. We anticipate that because of the magnitude and the size of the, the projects that will be embarking upon, it will um, absorb a significant supply of, of the, the excess labor that we see in the economy. President of the Chamber of Commerce, Karen Fontinel peter explained that the Chamber of Commerce is in the process of developing investment avenues for local investors. Private citizens, I'm certain, have projects who are in the stages of negotiation, maybe um, a government ministry is ho holding up some part of it 
Um, so we need to, and we will actually, um, we are proposing a local investment forum, mm -hmm. um, investor forum, the chamber that is, where our local investors can come and present and identify those projects that they have in the pipeline and trying to get jump started for the longest while. And for one reason or the other, um, it's been held up, whether it's <laughs> by the, the ministry or whatever. So some sort of intervention would be required so we could get our own private citizens who have those projects um, yeah. to develop, yeah. get, get it going as well. Yeah. The President of the Chamber of Commerce commended the government on the measures being taken towards the recovery of the economy post-COVID-19. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The arrival of more than 200 St. Lucians who are employed by Carnival Corporation has gone smoothly. The St. Lucians employed on the Carnival Glory and Caribbean Princess were repatriated after weeks at sea. The Department of Health and Wellness on Friday 8th May 2020 received some 219 St. Lucians who worked aboard the cruise ships Carnival Glory and Caribbean Princess. The receipt falls under the government of St. Lucia's efforts to repatriate individuals unable to return home due to the COVID-19 pandemic. These individuals were placed into quarantine for a period of 14 days as per the country's established protocol. Chief Environmental Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Parker Ragnanan, explained the process undertaken by the health team. We are doing two things. One is to looking at the medical records of the of the vessels and uh, ensuring that uh, there are no infectious diseases on board and that's part of the review of the maritime declaration uh, after that is done then um, clearance would be given for the uh, vessel to disembark the nationals once the nationals disembark they would then be screened by our medical personnel here. Um, the screening would take uh, two forms. One is a temperature check will be done, as well as uh, monitoring for any visible signs of respiratory symptoms. If anybody pose poses uh, such symptoms or elevated temperature, they would be managed separately. Um, it is expected that once they have uh, cleared the health assessment, that um, they would then board uh, the transport that is provided specifically for them and they would be taken straight from here to the designated facility for quarantine. Quarantine is necessary for persons who are well, with no symptoms of ill health, but who may have been exposed to a communicable disease. It restricts the movement of healthy people who may develop a disease after possible exposure to an infectious agent like COVID-19. The individuals repatriated during the quarantine period will be monitored by healthcare specialists, including temperature checks and assessment of respiratory symptoms routinely for the entire quarantine period. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, and Chairman for the National COVID-19 Response Committee, Honorable Dominic Fede, said the government remains committed to getting all illusions home. We applied a lot of pressure on the cruise lines to make sure that our citizens come home in the quickest possible time. Now we are bearing the cost as a government to do the quarantine. Uh, they are coming from the United States and so we want to make sure that um, they are monitored for a couple of days. Um, two weeks is the quarantine time, 14 days. And in monitoring them, the Ministry of Health officials will get a better handle on their health situation and that will then allow us to allow them back into the community safe and sound with their loved ones. The good news is, is that a lot of the people which we have quarantined, we, we see a very low rate of transmission coming from our quarantine facilities. So uh, if the trend continues, this batch of individuals are likely to come out um, with very limited uh, uh, COVID transmission. So. We are delighted that they are home. We are thankful. As part of the national COVID-19 response, quarantine centers have been set up in St. Lucia using various hotels to facilitate the large numbers of returning nationals through the repatriation process, as well as any non-nationals that may arrive in the country. Institutional quarantine remains the standard for St. Lucia. 
We hear from a St. Lucian returnee on his experience amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I believe I had a unique experience, um, unlike most of my colleagues, because of the departments I work with. I work with guest services. So up until yesterday, I was still working. I know that a lot of persons may, may have had cabin fever and all of that, but then particularly for me, it was a very good experience. Um, I know that the company did everything that they could. Uh, before we moved from our respective ships to the Carnival Glory, um, I mean, everybody was free to roam the ship as they, uh, as they would have wanted to. We were provided with meals and everything. Um, the only downside is that when we moved from the other ships to Carnival Glory, uh, because of the, the co-mingling, we had to move up in the level of um, security. So it moved up to um, drastic measures where you, ha you were quote-unquote confined to a cabin, but you were still given the opportunity to go out get vitamin D, um, socialize, of course we're social distancing. Um, I mean, I'm just thankful to be here. The Department of External Affairs continues working with ambassadors to facilitate the safe return of nationals. This, however, is done ensuring that quarantine capacity is maintained. The government of St. Lucia reaffirmed its commitment to getting all St. Lucians stuck abroad due to the COVID-19 pandemic home at the soonest. Meantime, government is working assiduously at providing the best conditions for returning nationals who must be quarantined. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says given the large numbers, additional facilities are being organized. Over the next few weeks, we will continue to receive other St. Lucian cruise workers and eventually our returning nationals. Quarantine centers have been set up in St. Lucia using various hotels to facilitate the large numbers of returning nationals and any non-nationals that may arrive of concern. Institutional quarantine remains the standard for St. Lucia. However, in certain cases, based on assessments, home quarantine has been facilitated. The Ministry of Health and Wellness, we once again ask the public to work with us to reduce the impact of COVID-19. Our returning nationals are asked to abide by the quarantine protocols. We ask their relatives and loved ones to support them throughout the process. Further, if anyone is aware of any individual who has entered St. Lucia through unofficial routes to alert the authorities, all these measures are in place to keep all of us safe. The ministry is also continuing aggressive testing for COVID-19 in the community. As of May 8, 2020, St. Lucia has recorded a total of 18 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 17 of them are fully recovered and have reintegrated into their communities, and one active case is currently in hospital care and recovering well. On Friday, May 8, 2020, results for 45 samples were received and they were all negative. This brings a total of 620 tests conducted to date. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations has informed that information being circulated on social media requesting that students of Forms 2 and 4 report to the Department for eBook Devices did not originate from the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations and is incorrect. The department's process is that students report their needs to their respective schools, which in turn will forward to the department for processing. This process has been working well thus far and allows for students in all educational districts to be reached. All information from the Department of Education will be posted on the department's and government's official websites. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment of vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Ensure that farm clothing and gear is clean. Wash hands thoroughly before harvesting crops. Use face masks and head ties whilst harvesting, cleaning and packaging crops. 
Use all safety precautions when transporting crops to the markets and depots, such as handling crates and crops with only clean hands and covering sneezes and coughs with a tissue or the inner arm to ensure body fluids or droplets don't get on produce and washing hands or using hand sanitizer after using the tissue. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tarjanel, Monsieur Madame Department of Responsibility for Information and Gouvernement cette ci GIS Assembly Television National Pays NTN Capositou Nouvelle Aquayol. Présentez Primus Hutchinson. Department Police Traffic j'ai trouvé bonne assistance pour faire yo plus confortable un logement neuf yo ça c'est un colony house à ce grand chemin John Compton mardi le 6 au mois de mai département trafic de yo en cérémonie officielle recevait 3000 dollars en valeur de meubles et clôt nécessité pour placer un établissement nouveau ça là c'est fondation make it happen qui fait ça possible Make it happen, c'est your initiative, Madame Raquel Dibley Chasney, Madame Premier Ministre Honorable Alan Chasney. Organisation Police Paya, ka we présentation sala, kon yon gwan si pro pour se police trafic, ki te ka weste a dan yon établissement avant sa, a sou la wipon, ki te a dan yon mauvais condition. Deuxième chef police, Wayne Chalry, remercie Fondation pour de gwe assistance sala pour se police trafic la. Chalry, oui, monsieur, madame de Boulay Chasney, pour ces mêmes salaires qui ont aidé ces policiers-là autant. Et aussi, oui, monsieur, madame Raquel de Boulay Chasney, pour l'amitié, ça c'est l'amitié fondation Make It Happen, pour fournir ces policiers trafic là et puis dégouer la confortabilité, ça là, pas seulement pour la police, mais aussi pour les pompiers et ses officiers à l'institution Baudelaire. Madame Chasney déclarait que c'était plaisir Make It Happen pour supporter et assister ces police trafic là madame premier ministre là ajouté que c'était des fondations pour te placer ces police là à d'ailleurs l'environnement qui est plus confortable comme ça critique pour yo ça opérer plus effectivement et apprécier valeur make it happen amasser l'argent ça là du grand bal l'année passée depuis commencement fondation en l'année 2016 met affaire be chef Organisation Madame Raquel Dibley Chasney qui a organisé plusieurs initiatives pour éprouver l'organisation des polices, des pompiers, institutions, prisons, bordelais, facilités sport, bibliothèques et l'école première à pays cette ci En quantité de 1,697 millions de dollars qui proposé pour l'année ici et l'année prochaine, c'est des passes qui ont représenté 80.2 en toutes les dépenses à corporation, 84.5% en budget qui était approuvé pour l'année 2019 ou 2020. C'est le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney qui a fait une déclaration de la présentation du budget l'année ici pour l'année prochaine. Sinon, le Premier ministre Chasney, l'agrandissement des passes là qui a montré une augmentation. Et puis, un pile significatif pour préparer au semen salaire et que l'autre dépense à façon salaire. Le Premier ministre Chasney dit aussi à une allocation de 565,443 millions pour payer le salaire et en somme de 461 millions de dollars. J'ai un programme 
pour couvrir l'assistance finance pour les travailleurs. Il y a 103,85 millions pour bénéficier qui ont été entrés à retraite. À parmi ça, c'est 12,4 millions à réponse pour la contribution qui a payé NIC. Le Premier ministre a dit que pendant ce qui propose de préserver le salaire pour les officiers publics, des grèves de négociation, situation qui a menacé le pays, qui a forcé le gouvernement pour examiner la législation qui a gouverné le salaire des secteurs publics et qui a mis façon pour faire service pour assurer la stabilité en bas de mauvais tracassement qui nous va payer cette ici présentement. Ministre pour Affaires et Développement Économique, Honorable Guy Joseph, dit qu'il est plein et puis façon les vivants qui ont été coopérés par le gouvernement qui a été facilité à neuf bio. Monsieur Joseph, qui parlait de la cérémonie pour te ouvrir, faciliter neuf pour les vivants à la place Castri, dès dimanche qui passait, déclaré qu'il a apprécié autant de gré compassion ces vivants là pour tout ça temps là qui y été à d'ailleurs place qu'à opérer pendant qu'il était aspect pour faciliter neuf là ouvert. Nous savons que nous sommes pour tirer là pour un certain temps, pour mettre à l'autre side là sur Jeremy Street, mais moi, ça vient au SP un petit temps pour nous tirer ça, joindre tout le en place. Mais nous sommes contents d'être bas en place et d'être vivant dans la caisse à vie, côté de l'hôtel, l'habitude, le café business. Faciliter la place neuf pour les vivants à Castri, bien occupé avec l'autre phase de projet à euh, pour la place là, qui a été grand restaurant, boutique, magasin, place pour amusement, côté pour les touristes visiter à parmi plusieurs autres. Et ce que nous avons pour nous là, je vais vous remercier autant de vous regarder, je vais vous une invitation. Je n'ai plus moins considéré que ça fait la vie de nous présenter une autre nouvelle à quoi on a fait ça. Je vais vous présenter au journal. Merci à Pil Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell. Thank you.